Hi, thanks for returning to my series of basic nursing skill videos. Today, I'm going to show you how to take a blood pressure. But first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Matamore and his senior class for videotaping my series of videos. As with any type of procedure or skill that you perform, you do wash your hands in the beginning of the procedure and you will wash them when you are completed. So I'm going to start the procedure of taking the blood pressure. One of the first things that you want to do is get your stethoscope and make sure that you do clean it off with an alcohol pad because you don't know who has used it before you. The first thing I like to do is to clean the air pieces off. Then I like to clean off the diaphragm of the stethoscope. When you do put the stethoscope in your ears, they do need to be pointed going inward in your ear. And then also to make sure that your stethoscope is turned at the right area, you want it on the diaphragm and not the bell. When it is in your ears, what I would recommend is to tap it ever so lightly and you should hear a loud sound in your ears. If you don't, what you need to do is to press down and then turn your tubing to make sure that it is in the right direction. It's not in the right direction. I'm pressing it down, turning. Oh yeah, it's loud. So the first thing that you want to ask your patient is, is there any arm I shouldn't use? Okay, and he said no, so I am now free to use any arm that I would like. When you put on the blood pressure cuff, you do need to put it on about an inch above the elbow. I always like to hold it. You want to wrap it around the arm firmly. You want to make sure the cuff is even. It's on. And then you'd like to look at the dial and you want to make sure that it is centered. That means it's calibrated. You would not use the blood pressure cuff if that pointer was not in that little rectangle in the center of your dial. The blood pressure cuff is on. One of the first things that I'm going to do is to feel for his brachial artery, which is medial. Okay, I can feel it, it's nice and strong. Okay, you then put your stethoscope where you felt it, put your thumb on top of your stethoscope and wrap your hand around his elbow. And the reason that you want your hand placed like this is you have better control and sometimes you need to press a little harder with your thumb to hear the blood pressure. I'm going to put the ear pieces in my ear. You take the bulb in your hand and what you want to do here is to turn this, the valve, clockwise. And once you have it turned and it stops, you don't want to press it too hard because you don't want to lock it. You now are going to pump it up. I'm going to pump it up to 160 because he's a young teenager. I now have it pumped up to 160. I now take the veil and I turn it counterclockwise. You release it, and what you do is, the first sound that you hear is the systolic, which is the heart contracting, and you want to write that down as a fraction, and his was 120, and then the lower number is the diastolic, where the heart is resting, and I got 80. And you do want to write the numbers as even. So his blood pressure is 120 over 80. And according to the American Heart Association, with the new standards, this is the beginning of high blood pressure. And that is the skill of taking a blood pressure, which I personally believe is one of the most important skills that a nurse can do. And not only to take it accurately, know what to do with the information. I would like to show you some common mistakes that are made when taking the blood pressure. Always make sure that the shirt is always rolled up. 
You never want to take the blood pressure on an arm that's wearing a shirt or a coat because the blood pressure will not be accurate. When you do take a blood pressure, do not take it more than twice in the same arm because it will not be accurate after that. When you do put the cuff on, I do recommend that you place your hand here, okay, so you do get a nice tight fit with the blood pressure cuff. What you don't want to do is put it on and it's not even and now the blood pressure cuff will actually slide down the arm. So do be careful when you put it on to hold it and try to make it firmly go around the arm. Okay, and I like to tuck it here so I can still see the dial so it is on firmly and won't slide down the arm. And make sure it's one inch from the elbow. And one last error that I do notice, which I know nobody watching this video will ever do, is do not put it on upside down. I have observed this with my students who are learning to do it. So do be careful and make sure that it is put on the right way. What I'd like to do now is to do six practice blood pressures. So get a pen and a sheet of paper and write these six down.
The only way that you can take an accurate blood pressure is by hearing it with your stethoscope. Do not be fooled by thinking you see the dial move and then taking the blood pressure on what you see with the dial. You can only hear it with your stethoscope. The more you practice this procedure, the easier it will get. Do not be disappointed. It will take you a couple of days. Once the blood pressure cuff is on and the arm is straightened, you felt where the brachial artery is and you place the diaphragm of your stethoscope here. I happen to be right-handed, so with my right hand, you place your thumb over the bell, wrap your hand around the elbow, and then in your left hand, you're gonna hold the ball. And remember to pump up the cuff you have to turn it clockwise, okay? And then you pump it up, and then when you release it, you turn it counterclockwise. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to take a blood pressure. And I personally believe this is one of the more important skills that a nurse can do. And not only accurately taking the blood pressure, knowing what to do with that information. Also, I've made a few other basic nursing videos, so when you have time, please watch them. One of them is how to make a hospital bed and open and close. How to wash your hands properly because we do know hospital acquired infections are very dangerous and serious to our patients. I've also made a video on how to properly position a patient and the last video is emptying the Foley catheter and probably documenting. I just have to share something very interesting with you. I recently have gone to the hospital to visit a couple of people and I was quite in awe when I saw the nurses position a patient and really all they did was lift up the arm and put a pillow. They did not turn the patient totally on their side, position them with a pillow in between their legs and on the other arm and behind their back. So if you do have time, please watch that video on how to properly position a patient. Thank you so much.